So uh, some of you will know uh, some of the story from Greenwich from last year's event here. And um, here we go. So this picture is actually three years old. This was taken not long after I started at Greenwich three years ago. See an empty building site to the right there. This is the Emirates cable car. And, and we have uh, uh, a strategy that's, that's uh, two and a half years old. And uh, the key facts, uh, it's a city test bed as a whole borough, 275,000 population. We're running a, a sharing cities, uh, but sharing cities is the name of our, an H2020 lighthouse project where we're a demo district. And we've run a smart mobility living lab, which is uh, the, the connected autonomous vehicle <coughs> test bed, which is a 19 million pound build, which is just going to contract. We're bidding in the 5G citizen test beds and trials, and um, Paul Senior was competing in the same thing yesterday morning. We're all uh, doing our best with uh, DCMS. There's 25 million on, on the table in 5 million grants. And uh, I've set up a, a city digital profile working group, or an industry specification group in Etsy, which is for smart city leaders to join together and understand how to replicate architecture without having to do technical standards. Um, I've been a director for a while of the City Protocol Society with Jamie as the chairman and Franz Anton as another director. And that's a way for cities to cluster together. I showed this sort of slide uh, last year, and uh, the, the thinking is, is still pretty, pretty the same, but I, I really want to show progression and, and show how things have changed, which have changed a lot uh, since this period. So we're still going for a, for a platform where NEC have been co-developing with us, and, and we've still got a service uh, portfolio linked by a software-defined network. And we, we've done that with risk share development. It's around the, the bottom half that we're now getting deeper into distributed ledger transaction wallets and, and notification models. And I'm thinking well, that's, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm not speaking into this. I used to apologize. I was just waving it around. I was thinking it's <laughs> handy. Used to a throat mic. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I'll start again. No, no, I won't. Um, so, uh, um, so uh, let me just, just move on. This is old thing. Uh, this is, I'm going to skip a bit. Uh, also, we've got this idea for clustered uh, procurement models, and this started off thinking maybe we get 10 cities. We, we've got uh, uh, DWF, who are a, um, a UK legal company, keen to do this on a, on a, uh, on a um, shared risk basis. And it's becoming clear that clusters of cities could get together and come into share ownership in a new co, which you, using tech or exemptions, we'd set up as an exempt organization that could trade with the, all, all its shareholders and write and launch a procurement framework. What's changed is the scale and the funding mechanisms. We're now looking at green bonds and potentially uh, initial coin offerings as a potential way of, of loading that up so that municipal scale could be deployed through the new money that's, that's coming in. Uh, so we still go for a, for a, a four-year framework and we still go for a dynamic procurement mechanism. So that bit hasn't changed. That's a potential daily update so SMEs can come into the framework. Um, that's the uh, you know, smart, smart district requires me to show this, which is the smart district illustration of what we're doing with Horizon 2020 cities. That's now in its third, just reaching the end of its third year of implementation, and it's got two years of observation to go. Uh, there's a lot of documentation around that. It's got all the smart watsits that you'd expect it would have. And we're, we're with London and Milan, uh, sorry, with Milan and Lisbon, and so Greenwich is the demonstrator site for London, and then we've got Warsaw. Um, uh, Bourgas and Bordeaux as follower cities, and it, it's it's done well. It's a labour of love. It's it's from a commercial point of view, it, it's 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 just bleeding because you can't really run these things without making a significant loss, even though they're 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 cost covered. So we need to find other ways of financing ourselves. The 5G bid that we're in, we've got new partners, and I think it's a simple thing to say for all the sort of big corporates here that we have to consciously go around to people who are fresh money, fresh legs. And ZTE are coming in uh, into, into Europe much harder than they were. And they've made a great offer for our RAN network, including this rather sexy blue pillar thing, which we can talk about. Um, we've, we've also gone quite deep into the perception of data. And what, what this is really new, and I, and I want you to just sort of hold on to this bit, and this is talk for the bar, really, because you would have seen HoloLens and stuff uh, on, on the demos last night. Uh, what I want you to imagine is the citizen can be immersed in the data and see it in an augmented or mixed reality or what Qualcomm calls extended reality. It's all much the same thing. So if you look out of that window and there are air quality sensors on the tops of those buildings, you can flick on the layer on your glasses, which may, may be just like these in a few years' time, 
And if you want to, you can see whether those sensors are OK. Now, where it gets really interesting is if you're interested in the detail, you reach up with your HoloLens interface, you click on that sensor image, and you open its blockchain wallet, and you look at its data. And then if you're authorized, you then twist in, see who it's selling its data to, because it's an actor in a blockchain network, and see how much money it's made and who owns it. Now, that whole dimension is all, is all getting uh, right in our faces now with available technology. What it means is that uh, you can see through the layers of the smart city if you choose to reveal them, or if you're managing it, you can actually look around you on a geospatial basis and see what's happening. And, and of course, it's not limited to the physical. You can have ground penetrating stuff and all the rest of it. It's a completely virtual uh, world. And we're working with uh, Double Me, who are a, a hollow portal studio in our neighboring university, Ravensbourne. Um, we've got some support from Microsoft HoloLens team in, in Redmond. Uh, Mark Day, who some of you have met, was the, was the director of City Protocol Society until last year and is now the global sales VP for, for, for HoloLens. So there are lots of, sort of interlinkages here that are interesting. Um, the key is security, and we've brought in, in, this is coming in anyway, but it's in our 5G bid, rivets, which is, and this is a generic technology, they're not unique, but I think one of the best around, which is hardware encrypted onto the chip so that you get uh, self-authenticating hardware that the operating system can't see. And this is absolutely critical technology. When you put it with that enabled chip, that's how you bond the, the, the blockchain onto the individual device, which could be a sensor, could be a phone. So you've got trusted execution, and you've got really secure interfaces with citizens and with other actors in your IoT network. Now, this is, you know, I'm going down the technical route. I'm not giving you the spiel that we give, give a citizen, but it is, it is all about citizens, and particularly about their authentication. And the service mix that I'm going to skip for now is, is all these things in, in that block there, um, including voting and polling. Uh, and that integration with the polling mechanism, and I'm completely on with, with James, so we've got ele elections in, in May. Uh, the whole council is, is you know, grounded. We're, we're out in Taipei. No politicians are coming. They're very busy in the, in the, in the run-up to the uh, ele elections in May. Um, but at this level, the cycle we're talking about is Securing power, generating finance, executing, demonstrating benefit, and loop. Demonstrate benefit, happiness, reinforce power, raise finance, execute. And the gap between finance and execute is your procurement model. And the substrata of, this will be a slide in an ideal world, but it's just not there at the moment. <laughs> the, the substrata of execute is a standards environment, and that's what we're doing in Etsy. So you've got to get through procurement, and you've got to run with standards, but it's all about execution to benefit, demonstrable benefit, uh, economic and social ROI. Uh, the future of the, this is a Qualcomm slide, which I really like. It's often a website called Qualcomm Extended, Qualcomm Extended Reality. This is the best view that I found of uh, what this future application may look like in a mass market, which becomes a sort of fashion item. We're, we're running, so this is next gen. This is, and you see in, this, in the small print, this was published last year and they were predicting 2019 for the availability of the lower latency infrastructure. But this is what flies when we're bidding for 5G networks. This is what really begins to fly when you can look in six degrees of freedom around these sorts of environments and see the data. I think this is coming, and I think it will unlock big bucks in terms of infrastructure investment. The real challenge, which is for another session, is how the city monetizes that intimate knowledge of all the infrastructure and the behavior of the citizens and gets in between its citizens and other aggregators, including Google and the, ob and, and the obvious people who are already sucking that data in. <coughs> How do we actually get uh, a beneficial relationship that is welcome to all parties to, to make that fly? Uh, on the scale of, of um, finance, I think that's one of the things that will change the balance of power. I think at the moment it's municipal consortia that are most likely to raise the multi-billion bonds and ICOs uh, that will be needed to launch specific services, which may be some of this. Incidentally, Rivets has did a successful ICO in September, uh, and, um, and we, we've just got a feel as to how, how that's going to work, looking at autonomous vehicle ICOs and then at other aspects of, of smart cities and green bonds. And uh, Carrie Ike, who's coming over here, uh, is a specialist to the United Nations. I'm trying to hook up United Nations, come to the session 
tomorrow afternoon uh, where she'll be talking with some city protocol people about what she's trying to do in connecting UN money and into investable projects. And, and talk to me if you're at all interested in collaborative fundraising, whether that be green bonds or, or ICOs. Thank you very much. Thank you.